Welcome home, baby. Presented by Pivot Bio. This is bad on the beans, but it's really good on the operation. Yeah, these are some double crops. I'll just put it out there like if Corey will spot me 20, if I can get a 20 handicap on these. Okay. Come back down. Come back down just a fudge, Stuart. Just a little bit. Oh, let's try that. All right, I'm gonna pick up. You let go down. I think we're pretty close. Come on, Jock. Jockey on TV and all. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Jock. I'll tell you what, Jock, just keep on going. Stay with it, Jock. Doc, you think this old tire make it around? Is that one hot? That's the one you want to put in your pocket, ain't it? Put it on there, Jock. Gotta have it. Is it hot? Send it. Look there. Well, just put it, we'll put it in the front bucket. This is the way you check beans. Get the real girth right there. <laughs> All right, we gotta go to the darn field, man. All right, let's go to the cornfield. We got it going. You going, will you take that and go by there, pivot base? Um, but yeah, I guess we'll go, go up here. That way it goes over and comes back. We may not have to, maybe we'll catch a rain, but it ain't looking no, good. So those over there at Airhead, they're turning the under the pivot, they're maturing out. Their yeah. leaves are turning yellow on them. I like They're them the at the house. Yeah. All right. You gonna get it walking? Yeah. It'll probably have to go forward. I think it's out of line going forward. So okay. you'll have to override, go reverse. Okay. We're gonna take this hammer right here. Wait a minute, no 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 no, it's all cool when all the all kind of stuff breaks on the farm, so we're gonna take the hammer right here and we're gonna it's gonna be known after this as the Alabama hammer. And we're gonna Welcome to Corn Warriors. We're gonna bring it in right here full effect. What is it, the 19th? This day the 19th, we got about, I guess we got about three or four days left and we'll have all the corn wrapped up. And then we'll move right along. We got about 150 acres of early beans that's getting ready to, we'll probably cut this week, end of this week, beginning of next week, and then we'll keep on trucking along to about Thanksgiving and don't end. We ain't had no major, major breakdowns this year. We've been, we had a little bit better season last year. We ain't got no grain cart stuff or fall in, you know, at somebody's house, so. A little bit better than last year, so we'll see. Maybe, maybe I didn't just jinx us right there with two or three days left. I can see our kind of look, you know. But, <laughs> it's about full. That's pretty good in one pass if it's full, right? Oh, I'm a professional. Since I was, I think, 13 is when they made me come out here to help with wheat. That's about all I ever get to do normally because Dad and our and Lee, our other combine operator, they they run it faster and better. And I rather, you know, when we can get it, get it done fast. You can, you know. So I'm normally doing this or trucking. I'm a pro at both, you know. So Dad ain't real good at doing this. So we got to keep him on a combine, you know. Yeah, we had a tough year, but. Luckily, the rotation we had, we were lucky to have, I guess about half of our, our corn under irrigation this year. And that helped major, because it stays, I don't know, I guess it, it never really cools down here at night. It's 95 during the day and low 80s, high 70s at night, you know, it never gets a chance to breathe. 
So, I mean, we are lucky to have as much as we did underwater, but it, you know, it could have been better, but we'll take what we got, you know. It could, it also could have been a lot worse. It's hard to learn a lot, you know, when it's so burned up, you, you can't use much of your, your, yeah. your test that you tried on it, because, because when you don't have no water, you know, it's hard to see what the differences it makes. Here at Advanced Shield, we're not only just a consulting company, but starting in 2021, we are now offering a full lineup of select crop inputs. A lot of good foliar feeding options with a bunch of stress relievers. Anything that has been tested and proven on our farm is now offered to you at a great low price. No middleman, it's just a simple call and ship directly to you. For the farmer, by a farmer. Unleash your crop's potential. Visit online or give me a call today. Hey, Dan Lepkis here with Corn Warriors Crews out today. So today we're just gonna run around, we're gonna look at some stuff. We're gonna look at some weird things that happen this spring. One thing's with uh, a planter. A planter, I'm gonna call it a trial, but it, it's an accidental trial. Our planter goofed up and it took uh, about four to six rows and took the seed away from those and planted them very thin, around 10,000, 10 to 12,000. And then it allocated those seeds across the rest of the row on the planter. And actually, as you went from like right to left, right being the lowest populations, the left side had the highest. So it actually ramped up all the way across. So every row we have a different population, which uh, it's kind of cool to look at to see how these, how these plants responded to that. So we're going to go in right now and take a look at that. We got some other things after that, but that's what we're going to do first. So, so here we go. So we're going to go in here, and I'm going to show you this screw up. So this, you know, this is this is a plant, right? This is one stalk. So look at look at what one stalk can do. I mean, for one thing, look at the size of the plant. These are the suckers or tillers that came off of it. Um, this plant. It's got four, but that one ain't gonna do nothing. These three, you know, have corn. One really big ear, two moderate sized ears. And that's kind of kind of replicated through. There's three or four on that one. Looks like three on that one. And we checked this yesterday. This was right at about 10,000. And I'm definitely not advocating planting at 10,000. So one of the problems I always have is in when we get in this higher yielding corn is we have such dense foliage that we can't get sunlight down into the canopy. So I'll actually have trouble even at pollination sometimes because there's no sun getting to the ear leaf. The pollen down down to the you know the actual silks. So the silks take longer to come out so lots of times the last silks coming out the pollen is done. It, it's, it's over with. So I'll have a little trouble with pollination with certain varieties and a really high yielding um, high high foliage type of corn where I've got a you know just a lot of leaf and a lot of green so but there is you know what for me I got to find that happy medium so with this little trial if that's what we're going to call it you almost can kind of find the happy medium so as you walk walk across this where it's really really sparse so that's one two three four rows five rows. It looks like those five rows were planting about the same. The sixth row looked like it was kind of just erratic. And then the seventh row, um, you start getting over to, you know, something that looks a little bit more, you know, a little closer to what it ought to be, but still not thick enough. Eighth row, eighth row, now this looks pretty close, probably to a population. Uh, it's in the neighborhood anyway, where you want to be. Now there is two, another factor I got to throw in here. I had two varieties. So see how this one is greener and the next one is not? Well, that's, that's a variety. So we're going to pop over another row. This we were just here yesterday. You know, um, this population, I'm, I don't know, this is probably 34 or 5,000. Ears are, you know, pretty good. Uh, this is probably pretty close to where we needed to be in this field. Um, as Now let's just move across and you're going to see how it gets thicker yeah. and the ears will start getting smaller. 
So now we're probably getting kind of into a 40,000 range. Um, you know, ears still pretty good, but I'm seeing some smaller ones. Now look, look, look at your plant population on the next. Now we're probably up to 45,000. Um, ears starting to interplant competition is really starting to be a problem in here. We've got a few with no ears. Ears are smaller. Um, stalks are still, you know, pretty, pretty good. But now keep coming to see it just keeps getting thicker. It just keeps getting thicker. Probably pushing 50,000. And you can see the ears are really starting to suffer. You know, we're overpopulated here. We're definitely overpopulated. So no sunlight, zero, is getting into the canopy. That's what will affect me if I start getting too thick with big yep. bushy, yep. no sunlight gets down in here. I'd like to see spots out there. Otherwise, you're so dark in here. So, I mean, now we're up to that row that's probably in that 70,000 range. Luckily, it's still standing. Actually, um, you know, we got some greenness up there, but, you know, our ears are only that, you know. Now, 70,000 of those, I don't know, what's that going to yield? Hell, I can't tell you, <laughs> you know. I mean, I guess if you doubled it, that would be the ear, so. I, if I can talk somebody into it, and I don't want to do it, um, I'm going to have them do the bucket thing on each row, but I got to talk someone into doing that first. <laughs> so, Nate'll do it. Nate'll do it. Nate'll do it. <laughs>We got Mark to come down from Concept Agritech. We like to talk with the growers and get some of that history. That's what gave farmers returns. We got some of Concept Sweet Success. Get that soil biology ramped up. We're getting a little bit of everything. So this is the program we'll be running. That's all that's in there. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Well, you know, this year, um, if we always measure the present year by the past as to what we did as far as the yields go and stuff and so you know this year unfortunately we had a pretty significant drought that come across here and impacted most of our dry land crops uh, and it was a significant reduction from last year but on a positive note what we have seen over the past few months is a really historical highs uh, with the commodities from wheat corn soybeans uh, we've seen some really high prices, so that's helped buffer some of the yield drag that we've had this year uh, from the lack of rain. And it wasn't necessarily so much a lack of rain, just we had a lot of days of really hot weather that carried into the night and it hurt our pollination a little bit, but we're still got a crop coming in. It's just not going to be the big one uh, like we'd like to have every year. Not every year can be that way. So just as all agribusiness men and women do across this country every day, we adapt, uh, we make changes, we overcome. Uh, every, everything is an opportunity uh, to do something better, to change things. Uh, and you know, we just look at our options and see what we can do again next year. It's hard to compare to last year. Last year was probably a record uh, dry land yield for us in corn. Uh, we were pushing 230 across the board on dry land last year. And, you know, it, I hate to even say this, but we've cut some 60 bushel dry land corn this time. Uh, so it, just an average, I'd say we were off 150 bushels uh, to the acre on our dry land crop uh, this time. Now we had some vari a variety that we planted early, like extremely early, and we got rained out for about three weeks. That was our best dry land corn. It, it come in about 135 to 145 bushel. So it was still significantly off uh, from last year, but it was just something that was out of our control. Uh, you know, we do everything we can, and when we leave the seed in the field, it's up to Mother Nature uh, what happens after that. Typically, our strategy is to capture market carries and to, chap and to capture basis movements in the market. Well, we're very fortunate where we farm here. Uh, we're close to a lot of end users uh, for corn. And so that always helps out 
uh, significantly, even on a good year and even more on, on a bad year. And so a lot of times we try to fill these grain bins up behind me and we keep them max capacity, carry that into the next year, and then we start servicing the poultry companies around here as needed. This year, uh, we had an opportunity that's very rare uh, down here in the south during harvest time. We had record high prices. And so we were selling corn at harvest time uh, for around 750 to 780 a bushel, which is just unheard of at this time of year. So what that allowed us to do was, is to go on and move some corn, you know, generate that cash flow uh, at, at harvest time instead of storing, uh, keeping it to say, March, April, May, June, uh, have to take care of it, keep it aerated and stuff like that. So I was able to capture a big market need at the time because we have a dryer and have a facility here to where we harvest corn early. And so we were able to catch a window to where a lot of the chicken mills around here were running low on corn. And so we decided to ship. Uh, that's what we built this facility for so we could be a just-in-time uh, facility to deliver uh, to strategically to these places when they get low and it really paid off this year. Uh, the remainder of our crop, uh, we'll probably store it. But it, again, as I said, we, we have options now and we have opportunity because we have a smaller corn crop. We're on, on the verge of having a really, really good uh, double crop bean crop. And so what we're gonna be able to do with that is we're gonna run four machines and because I'm not going to be completely full in these grain bins, We'll be able to run four machines, keep the machines running, get our bean crop out faster than we ever have, store those, and it's fortunate also that bean prices are higher right now than they ever are. We've got extremely high basis uh, for this time of year. So yeah, the drought really stung us pretty bad, but we're very fortunate to have really good high prices when, you know, when anytime you're talking about plus $7 corn, plus $15 soybeans, uh, plus ten dollar wheat, um, that's good. That that helps uh, that helps ease the pain of those uh, off years a little bit. Next, probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator, it's plant health. We have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. You see how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. What we are in is, if you recall, the planting season, I did just a little bit of twin row corn. It's just 40 acres, kind of right at my house, just to play around with a little bit. A little different management than we do with our other planter because it's a little harder. We do not have a two by two system on it. I did go in and dribble some on top with our, what I call Sally, my little John Deere sprayer. Uh, but it's, it's different systems. So we're just playing a little bit, I don't know. Um, uh, sure like, you know, I always talk about that interplant competition. Doesn't this look nice as far apart as these stalks are? You know, look at the distance in between those. Um, pretty good stalk girth then, right? Um, these plants, you know, we're getting along in, so we're getting some of our, you know, lower leaves are dying, but as you can see, the main shank's nice and green yet. We still have some green in the roots, so that's a good sign. Um, ear placement, you know, this particular hybrid seems, it's a new hybrid to me, seems a little high. Uh, but, you know, uh, pretty, pretty decent ears. Uh, and we'll put, do like three, four, right in a row here. We got this guy's a little higher than the rest, which you kind of want them all to be the same height, right? But if it puts on an ear like that and it's four inches taller, I'll take it, right? Let's not get too concerned about that. A uh, little bit of 
chip back, looks like, but I don't know, four ears right there in a row. I, this, this corn's got really good grain quality. Um, we're filling yet, yeah, you know, it's still adding test weight. We'll see. It's not, it's not 400 bushel, I know that, but it's, uh, it might be three. You know, we'll, uh, we'll see how it turns out, this population. So, it's interesting. Like I said, we're trying the twin row, and uh, we did it on the beans and a little bit of corn. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> explain what this is, just for your non-farm families. So this is what they call a single point coupling. It has all the hydraulic functions and the electronics all in one convenient place. So you have the combine side, you have your head side. You lined up these pins. Whoever invented this was very smart. Okay, you just plug in, put your box, now all those hydraulics are hooked up and electronics are hooked up and when I threw that there's a cable right here hooked to the pins that locks the heads on. So that thing does it all. That's pretty cool. Kudos to whoever invented that one. I need some easy because it's hard on me. These are what you call your, uh, your stripping or snapping plates. Yeah. So the ears come right down against those, or in the, the stalk goes down here, and then the ear gets stripped off. So Drago has the thing that these are on springs, so they will vary to the stalk size. So if you have a stalk that's you know that big, it'll, or if you have one that big, it'll it'll automatically squeeze down where most other heads you have to do that hydraulically. Well, this is doing it all the time. Really good feature of Drago's. Really good feature. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our pivot bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. They're proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. this the pivot bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. So. 